Hello, everyone. Welcome to something new that I am trying here. Uh, today was pre-release day for Magic the Gathering, in which I got... That is way too big, actually. There. Uh, in which I got not one, but two pre-release kits of Corset 2021. And four extra packs. Uh, since pre-releases don't currently exist right now. Um, the local gaming store just basically gave away two free packs with every pre-release kit that we have. I have some top loaders and some sleeves over here in case we get some valuable cards. Uh, I love Magic the Gathering, as you can see by the thing behind me. So um, I figured, you know, if I'm buying these, I might as well, you know, make a video out of them. That right there. So let's crack this open. Okay, so you get a nice little nifty box, lifts up, you get a dice, which that's weird. Why is this Rivals of Ixalan? That, that is weird. Okay, uh, you get a Date stamp card. Come on. There we go. Niambi, the uh, esteemed speaker. Flash, so you can cast it at instant speed. When it enters the battlefield, return another creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, gain life to that creature's converted mana cost. And then you can discard a legendary card to draw two cards. You get... Six packs, oops, keep bumping the camera. Six packs in the box, as well as like a sleeve, um, not a sleeve thing, but like a divider for your box of cards. Uh, you get a code, so if you guys play Magic Arena online, you can go ahead and use this code. And a little, um, here's how to. Here's how to make a pre-release deck type thing. Doesn't particularly matter to me, but we get to learn a little bit about um, the time of Teferi because this is a Teferi specific set. There you go. All right, so uh, basically my plan is I'm gonna crack open these six packs and then uh, these two as well for this kit. So let's take a look at the cards. Uh, the token's up front, so, well, I guess we'll use this one as our test pack. Alright, so, soldier token. Ooh, I like that for us. That looks really cool. Okay, so the foil's up front here, so epitaph golem. There we go. Five mana for three five. Pay two mana, put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of your library. Okay, and I guess that's our rare then. Demonic Embrace. Uh, enchant a creature for one and two black. Plus three, plus one, flying, and is a demon. And you may cast this card from your graveyard by paying three life, discarding a card, and paying the converted mana cost. Okay, so the pre-release kit, I'm going to move the first four cards, I guess. Or three cards after the token. Uh, Vryn Wingmare. A 2-1 flyer that makes non-creature spells cost one more. Kite Sail Freebooter, look at your opponent's hand, discard a non-creature, non-land card from it. A 1-2 flyer, not bad. Fierce Empath, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a converted mana cost, six or greater creature, and put it in your hand. Grasp the Darkness, great m removal spell here. Minus four, minus four to a creature. Silent Dart, you can sacrifice it to do three damage. Hunter's Edge, buff your creature up and then have it deal it it's damage to a creature, or it's power to a creature. So another uh, good green removal. Ooh, that's nice. Garuk's uh, Gorehorn. No abilities, but this is one of the um, extended arts. Because if you look down here, um, 
it says 306, but then it doesn't have a number behind it. But if you look at the Hunter's Edge, it says, uh, I think that's 189. Yes, 189 out of 274. Uh, so this is, uh, a, quote unquote, a harder version of the card to find. Uh, villager rights. I wish my camera would autofocus here. Come on. Uh, additional cost of the spell, sacrifice a creature, draw two cards. Uh, ornery Dilophosaur, death touch when it attacks. If you control a creature with power four greater, it gets plus two, plus two, so it pumps itself, which isn't bad. Alpine Watchdog, so a two, two vigilance. The cute boy. Crash through, creatures gain trample, and you draw a card, so red draw isn't bad. And Keen Guild ma or Glide Master, uh, you can give a creature flying. All right, so not horrible. So let's take a. Uh, so the the rare I don't think is worth that much, and neither is the foil, but I will set those aside actually, as well as the extended or the um, showcase version of one of the cards. So those are going to go right there. Uh, one, two, three, four. Here's here's the card. Here's the pack. <laughs> All right. So if it's set up the same way, that's the token, which means we get land, possible foil, and rare. So we put those to the back. Alright, so Riddle Form, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may have this become a 3-3 three, three Sphinx with Flying. Volcanic Geyser, deal X damage to any target. And we that was only two uncommons, so I know the back card isn't uncommon, so we're going to grab that. So another Vryn Winning Mare. Dub, Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus two, has First Strike, and is a Knight in addition to its types. Mistral Singer, a 2-2 two -two Flying and Prowess, so if you cast a non-creature spell, it pumps itself for a turn. Shock, deal 2 damage to any target. Very typical of red. Uh, Ranger's Guile, target creature you control gets plus 1, plus 1 in Hexproof. Rise again, return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Snare Spinner. There we go, that might help. Uh, whenever it blocks a creature with flying, it gets uh, plus two, plus oh, so making it a three, three. Burn bright. All of your creatures get plus two, plus oh. King Glide Master, we saw. Staunch Shieldmate, just a standard one, three for one. Bone, pr Bone Pit Brute. Menace, so it can't be blocked except for by two or more creatures. And it enters the battlefield, it pumps another creature by four. That's not bad. Okay, we got Scoured Barrens, so it's a uh, land that comes into play tap. It gives you one life, and it allows you to get either white or uh, black mana. And then Necromentia. Choose a card name other than a basic land name. Search target opponent's graveyard, hand, library, and any number of car for any number of cards with that name and exile them. That player shuffles their library, then creates a 2-2 black zombie creature for each card exiled this way. So you eliminate a very uh, big potential threat, such as a uh, Planeswalker or something that you don't want to do with, and they end up getting a couple of creatures that then you have to deal with. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. You get rid of their strong stuff, but then they have a uh, pretty big board state. Uh, so that will go there, as well as there was something else I thought. Oh, maybe not in this set. I do want the land from the last pack. That goes right there. I started playing Magic when I was a senior in high school, so I really got into it. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't be stuck. Okay, so... Token... Uh, land, possible foil, and rare. 
Okay. Fungal Rebirth. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If a creature died, create two creatures. Uh, two saplings, so not horrible. Twin Blade Assassins. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died, draw a card, so not bad. And Angelic Ascension. Exile a creature. Its controller gets a 4-4 Angel with Flying. Uh, so this is our third, which means we get a foil in this set, or in this pack. Um, this isn't bad. You can either uh, get rid of a very small creature of your own, and you get a 4-4, four, four, or you end up uh, eliminating one of their threats, but giving your opponent a 4-4. Four, four. Basri's Acolyte, lifelink, so you gain life whenever it deals damage, and when it enters the battlefield, it gives a permanent boost to up to two different creatures you control. Anointed Choice Year, lifelink, and you can boost it for a turn for five mana. Return to nature, you can destroy an artifact, an enchantment, or exile a card from a graveyard. Skeleton Archer, when it enters, you can deal a damage to anything. Not horrible. Sanguine Indulgence costs three less if you gain three or more life this turn and return two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, Garuk's Gorehorn, so that is um, the normal version where if we compare it to the last one, which, where did it go? So it's the exact same art, it just has like a different border. And this one I think is just prettier. So there's that. Thrill of Possibility. Discard a card in addition to the converted mana cost and draw two cards. So red draw, that's typical. Uh, capture Spear, instant speed because of the flash. You tap an enchanted creature and it doesn't untap, so you basically lock down one of their creatures. Celestial Enforcer, uh, you can tap a creature, but only if you control a creature with flying. A 2-2 Vigilant Knight, which isn't bad. It looks like the top was a little bit bent there, sadly. Mountain. A Foil Thrill of Possibility. And a Ghostly Pilfler. Uh, becomes untapped. You can pay two mana and draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, you draw a card. Then you can discard a card in order to make him unblockable. So not... I kind of like that. He's a spirit, which makes him interesting. Because I've seen that spirits are kind of making a resurgence uh, a little bit in this set. How did I do that? <laughs> okay. Token, uh, land, possible foil, and rare. Go into the back. We have another Kite Sail Freebooter. Hellkite Punisher, so a nice little dragon here. Uh, flying, fire breathing as an ability, so every red mana pumps its power up one, and it's a 6-6. Six, six. And a Seasoned Hollow Blade, so we're going to have another foil here. Discard a card and tap this guy. He gains Indestructible. Roaming Ghost Light. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, return a non-spirit creature to its owner's hand. Dub we've seen. Swift response, destroy a tapped creature. Sentencing's training. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card, and then the creature is slightly more powerful and gains trample. So any excess damage uh, between your power and the opponent's toughness is dealt to the opponent. Village rights we've seen. Burn bright we've seen. Frantic Inventory, draw a card, then draw cards equal to the number of cards named Frantic Inventory in your graveyard. So you draw a card for the first one, and then the second one you draw a card, and then you draw an additional card because you have one Frantic Inventory in your graveyard. So the, by, by the time you cast your fourth, it, it essentially goes one, two, three, four, uh, if you were to get these. Feet of Resistance, put a plus one, plus one counter on a target creature you control, so a permanent boost. <laughs> Ooh, and then it gains protection from a color until the end of your turn. So as it says, can't be blocked, targeted, dealt damage, equipped, or enchanted by anything of that specific color. So if your opponent is going pure blue, you use this and say protection from blue. 
Goblin Wizardry. Create two 1-1 one, one Goblin Wizard creatures with prowess, which is interesting. Zombie token. That doesn't look bad. Rugged Highlands. So very similar to Scoured Barrens, except this is red and green. Ooh. Foil Basic Forest with that special art. That's really cool. And a Glorious Anthem. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Nice. I'm going to put uh, the forest in a sleeve, actually. I know it's only a forest, but the art just makes it look really cool. And I don't know if I have the Glorious Anthem in a deck that I'm going to use. So I'm actually going to sleeve up uh, the rest of the cards that we've opened, or at least the rest of the rares, foils, and uh, special arts. I mean, it's a bunch of, like, common foils, so that I know they're not worth money. Uh, but it's kind of cool to see. And I think that's the exact same forest that I've gotten, uh, that I got before. That I now have as, as a foil version. Alright, and one last card. Yeah, I don't think any of those are of, like, significant value. But, you know, you never know. It could end up being like, oh, hey, they, uh... You know, for some reason, the Demonic Embrace is like a $15 card or something. I'm going to move that over here so I can see my recording length. Alright, so token, land, possible foil, and rare. Come on. It's coming, slowly. Sanqu Sanctum of Tranquil Light. Uh, six mana tap a creature, but it lowers the cost by every shrine that you end up having, which the shrines have returned uh, in this set. Although, different shrines. Soul Seer, five damage to a creature or planeswalker, and they lose indestructible. This is a great uh, red burn card. This is great for this set. All right, and we have another... Um, uncommon in the back here which is cauldron uh one in a black sack a creature gain a life and draw a card not horrible uh legion's judgment destroy a creature with greater than four power so not horrible duress look at your opponent's hand choose a non-creature non-land card from it and discard it prismite uh you can filter mana you lose one of your mana but you can filter it to a color you need so if you're in a two-color deck, let's say uh, wed, red and white, and you have two red mana, but you need a white mana for something, uh, you would end up paying two red mana into this, getting one white mana out of it. Uh, Land of War Visionary. So three mana, uh, enters the battlefield, draw a card, and then you tap it for green. So it's a little bit of a mana ramp, dude. Uh, Mass Black Guard. Flash, so it also has instant, essentially. And it gets plus one, plus one for three mana. Fervor of the Bitten. It gets cre the creature gets plus two, plus two, and attacks every combat. Uh, we've seen the Dilophosaur. Oh, hello. All right, we've seen the uh, Indulgence. We've seen the Frantic Inventory. Uh, makeshift Battalion. When it and two other creatures attack, put a permanent plus one, plus one counter on Makeshift Battalion. Soldier Token. Swamp. And a Temple of Mystery. I will take a Temple of Mystery. Uh, so it enters the battlefield tapped. You look at the top card of your library and choose whether you want to keep it there or put it on the bottom. And you get one of two color of mana. I think that's my third Temple of Mystery total because that card's been reprinted before. So the last the last pack that was out of the kit, and then we still have two more. Token, land, potential foil, rare. All right, Havoc Jester, when you sacrifice a permanent, deal one damage to any target. Siege Striker, 
it has double strike, so it deals its damage and then it deals its damage again. Uh, when it attacks, you may tap any number of untapped creatures you control to pump him uh, for the turn. So you tap uh, three untapped creatures, he becomes a 4-4 with double strike. Uh, Land of War of Vision... Oh, that was actually the second uncommon. So we pull this out. Cultivate. Search your library for two basic lands, reveal them, put one on the battlefield tapped, and one into your hand. So a nice little ramp uh, for your deck, as well as it thins your deck out so you're less likely to draw lands. It's pretty good. This is a great card. Uh, Land War Visionary we've seen. Makeshift Blackguard we've seen. Fervor we've seen. Frost Breath. Tap up to two target creatures. They do not untap during your opponent's next untap step. So uh, you essentially lock them down for a turn, which is great. Uh, Warded Battlements, Defender, and Attacking Creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. So your attackers are a little bit stronger. Uh, Alchemist Gift, you give a creature a slight boost of plus one, plus one, and then either give it Death Touch uh, to kill something, or if it's already going to kill it, you give it Life Link, and you gain some life while uh, destroying their creature. Uh, Portcullis Vine, Defender, pay two mana and sack a creature with Defender, and draw a card. Tome anim Anima, uh, it can't be blocked if you've drawn two or more cards this turn. So you always draw a card at the beginning of your turn, and then if you have a spell like the Frantic Inventory to draw an extra card, then you get to uh, have this guy be unblockable. Concord Pegasus, just a 1-3 flyer. Crash through, we've seen. That is not a token. That is a... Yeah, that's just one of those uh, advertisements. That's worthless. Uh, Blossoming Sands. Uh, so green, white, gain a life land. Ooh, and a hooded blight fang. Okay. Death touch. So it will destroy anything that it deals damage to. Uh, whenever a creature you control with death touch attacks, uh, drain your opponent one life and you gain that life. And whenever a creature you control with Death Touch deals do combat damage to a Planeswalker, destroy that Planeswalker. That is not bad for a Death Touch type deck. That's pretty... That's pretty good. Alright. And so, we have two more packs that would have been our quote-unquote prize support. And these are just, these are set up regularly, so I don't know what's going on. All right, Makeshift Battalion, we've seen. Frantic Inventory, we've seen. Crash Through, we've seen. Village Rights, we've seen. Sensen's Training, we've seen. Fetid Imp, a 1-2 flying, and you can give it Death Touch. So any amount of damage it deals to a creature is enough to destroy it. So um, normally, you would need to deal 2 damage to this creature to destroy it. But if you had a creature with 1 power um, deal damage that had death touch, this dies no matter what. Uh, Grug Scorehorn, we've seen that, just a 7-3 vanilla. Return to Nature, we've seen. Skeleton Archer, we've seen. Tormod's Crypt, a free card. You don't have to pay any mana to cast it. That's not bad. Sacrifice it and exile all cards from a player's graveyard. So preventing any sort of, of, any sort of the recursion cards that we've seen where you're grabbing stuff from your graveyard and either putting it on the battlefield or in your hand. Uh, Malefic Scythe enters the battlefield with a soul counter on it. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each soul counter on the scythe. Whenever an equipped creature dies, put a soul counter on the scythe. So you equip this to something small, you swing with it until it dies, or you block until it dies, and then this starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger, which is interesting. Uh, Burl Fist Oak, whenever you draw a card, it gets stronger. So you play this, and then if it goes to your next turn, it minimally will be a 4-5. Ooh, nice. Azusa, Lost But Seeking. You may play two additional lands during each of your turn. Normally, you can only play one land a turn, uh, but this allows you to play three, so some great ramping. That's going to go in a sleeve. And a foil frantic inventory, which I think is going to be worth a little bit, actually. Um, because blue draw is very important. Uh, and then we got a planes and a zombie token. So I'm going to put both of those in a sleeve. 
the Azusa is going to be uh, very useful, I feel. I don't think I have an Azusa at all. So for a green, uh, like a green commander deck or something, that would be amazing. And then the last pack here. All right. Lofty Denial, we have not seen yet. Just need to get it to focus. Uh, counter a spell unless the opponent pays an additional one mana. So if they played, for example, Azusa. Azusa has three mana, so she uh, it would have to be four mana. If you control a creature with flying, it's actually an additional four mana instead. That is, uh, that's strong. Uh, Ignatius Kerr. Uh, a 1-2 dog where you pay 1 in a red and it gets plus 2 plus 0, oh, so not bad. Valorous Steed, when it enters the battlefield, you get a 2-2 two, two knight. So you get 5 power worth of creatures uh, for 5 mana, so not horrible. Cancel, just ca uh, counter a spell so your opponent can't cast it. We've seen the indulgence. Colossal Dread Maw. 6-6 six, six, Trample, that's basically it. <laughs> Ooh, okay, okay. Here's one of the other, like, alternate showcase-type arts. Liliana Steward. Sack the Steward. Target opponent just cards a card, uh, but only do it during your turn. That, I like that art. That's really cool. As, that, as you can see, it says 300 out of nothing. So this is one of this, quote-unquote, secret cards of the set. Okay, anointed... Uh, Chorister, we've already seen. The Acolyte, we've seen. Canopy Stalker, must be blocked if able. And when this dies, you gain one life for each creature that died this turn. Oop. Meteorite, when it enters the battlefield, deal two damage to something, and then you get a mana of any color. Warden of the Woods, Vigilance, and when it becomes a target of a spell or an ability that your opponent controls... Uh, you draw two cards. You may draw two cards, so you don't have to. But card advantage is always good. Liliana's Standard Bearer. Flash, so it's got instant speed. Enters the battlefield, draw X cards, where X is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. Ooh, okay. Oh, and we get a uh, Vinmir Pegasus foil. Okay. And we get, we get a showcase mountain. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. I love, I love the little, like, fire that's down here. That's awesome. And a pirate. Oh, I didn't even realize there was a pirate in this deck. All right. That's not bad. I will take that. So out of the eight packs, nothing overtly jumps out at me as, like, screaming value. Um... But we did get some interesting stuff. Like the, uh, the standard bearer is pretty cool. Uh, we got quite a few of those alternate arts uh, that you can end up getting. Uh, the Azusa, I think, is the most valuable of the stuff that we ended up getting. So, yeah, we got the Azusa, the Frantic Inventory, the Hooded Blightfang, uh, which might end up being pretty decent. The Temple of Mystery, Demonic Embrace, Foil Empathic Golem, Necromentia, Forest, uh, that is uh, like showcase art, Garuk's Gorehorn as a showcase art, Thrill of Possibility Foil, Ghostly Pilfer, Glorious Anthem, the Showcase Forest as a foil, Showcase Mountain, Vryn Wingmare as a foil, Standard Bearer, uh, the Showcase Liliana's uh, Servant, as well as our date stamp, Nambia. So that was our uh, first kit. And this I can see how long this is getting uh, because I explained quite a few of the cards. So uh, there will be a second part to this where you guys get to see uh, us crack open our last kit here. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next video.